projects. In this video, we are going to explain about an improved energy efficient clustering protocol to prolong the lifetime of the WSN based IoT. Introduction An improved energy efficient clustering protocol is a specialized communication strategy designed to enhance the efficiency and longevity of wireless sensor network within the context of Internet of Things. WSN wireless sensor network are an essential component of IoT systems consisting of numerous small low power devices equipped with sensors to collect data from environment. However, these devices are typically resource constrained, operating on limited battery power and need to be energy efficient to ensure prolonged network operation. Objective The main goal of the improved energy efficient clustering protocol is to prolong the lifetime of the WSN based IoT by minimizing energy consumption and optimizing data transmission. This is achieved by organizing the sensor nodes into clusters where one node acts as the cluster head and the other nodes members communicate with the cluster head. The cluster head is responsible for aggregating and forwarding data to the base station or sink, which processes and analyzes the information. Requirements To implement this project, we have two kinds of requirements hardware requirements and software requirements. In hardware requirements, we have operating system windows only, processor i5 and above, RAM 4 GB and above, hard disk 20 GB and above. In software requirements, we have Python ITEL with 3.7 version. Methodology To implement this project, we have designed the following modules. The first module is Generate WSN Network. This module creates the wireless sensor network topology by deploying sensor nodes across the area of interest. The nodes form a communication network for data exchange within the IoT system. And the second module is Find Optimal Cluster Size. This module determines the most suitable cluster size to maximize energy efficiency and network performance. It considers factors like node density and communication range to strike a balance between data aggregation and data energy conservation. And the third module is Run Modified FCM. The modified fuzzy C means algorithm is applied in this module for cluster formation. It optimally assigns nodes to clusters based on their proximity and similarity, ensuring efficient data aggregation and minimizing energy consumption. And the fourth module is Rotation Cluster Head Selection. To prevent early exhaustion of cluster heads, this module dynamically rot rotates the selection of cluster heads among eligible nodes. Rotation distributes the energy load evenly prolonging network lifetime. And the fifth module is Road Packets Root Packets to Base Station. This module establishes data routing paths from cluster head to the base station or sync node. It employs energy efficient routing algorithms to transmit data effectively over the network. And the sixth module is Energy Consumption Graph. This module visualizes the energy consumption patterns of nodes over time. It provides insights into the effectiveness of the protocol, enabling optimization strategies and facilitating decision making to extend the overall network lifetime. Execution For the execution of the project, we need to open the code folder. This is the code folder. These are the main code file and this is the run.bat file. Instead of executing a project in the command line interface, we have created Windows bat file to execute the project. Double click on run.bat file. A this is the graphical user interface. We have to select the number of nodes. So in this, I am selecting the number of nodes as 30. And now click on generate WSN network to generate the nodes. So here we can see that the nodes are generated. So all these nodes which are generated are virtual nodes and the red color nodes are the mobile nodes and the blue color is the base station. Now click on find optimal cluster size to find the size of the cluster. So here in the text view we can see that the cluster size is 4. Now click on run modified FCM to cluster all the nodes. 
so here we can see that the uh, that the nodes are divided into four different clusters with four different colors so we are having four clusters with the blue color yellow color green color and green color and red color so the nodes with blue color come in one cluster and the nodes with yellow color come in another cluster and the nodes with green color come in another cl cluster and the nodes with red color come in another cluster nodes with the same color come in the same cluster so in the text view we can see that the node id 0 is in cluster 2 so here we can see that 0 is the blue color node so it comes in cluster 2 so we can say that the nodes with the blue color will all come under cluster 2 that is the node 17 mn17 mn18 mn12 mn26 mn19 15 all of these nodes which are of blue color will come under cluster 2 so blue color represents the cluster 2 and node id 1 is in cluster 3 so here where is so here we can see that yellow color mn1 this is the node 1 and this node 1 comes in cluster 3 it means that all the nodes with yellow color come in cluster 3 that is mn2625 so these yellow color nodes come under cluster 3 blue color is cluster 2 yellow color is cluster 3 so in the same way we will have the cluster 1 and 0 also so now we have to select the node id from the node drop down box so we will uh, let's say we are selecting node 3 now click on rotation cluster head selection so here we can see that the cluster heads are selected for each cluster so for the blue color cluster this is the cluster head ch represents the cluster head so for the blue color node this is the cluster and for the yellow color node this is the cl uh, cluster head so for each cluster we got the cluster head so in the text view we can see that cluster head for cluster 0 is 17 so this is the cluster uh, this is the cluster 0 in which ch17 is the cluster head now click on root packets to base station uh, to transfer the dummy data so here we can see that this this line represents the transmission of the data from the source node to the base station passing from the cluster head so here we have selected the source node has three and the this node will select its nearest neighbor that is ch28 which is the cluster head also so the data is transferred from mn3 to the ch28 and this cluster head will transfer the data to its nearest uh, neighbor so the nearest neighbor to ch28 is mn10 so the data is transferred from 28 to 10 and from 10 it will be transferred to 7 and from 7 it will be transferred to 4 14 and then finally it will reach the base station so in this way the data is transferred from the source node to the base station passing the cluster head now click on energy consumption graph so here we can see this is the energy consumption graph the x-axis represents the technique name and the y-axis represents the energy consumption so from this graph we can say that proposed ieee cp energy is having less energy compared to the existing eecp energy due to the optimal selection of the path now close this and the final conclusion of the project is the proposed energy efficient The project concludes that the proposed energy efficient and energy balanced clustering routing protocol for wireless sensor network based on an improved artificial B colony ABC algorithm performs well in terms of energy consumption balance, energy efficiency, network life, network stability period and network throughput. Under the limitation of the sensor nodes, 
limited power the suggested algorithm balances energy consumption and optimizes energy efficiency hence increasing energy lifetime However, because it is based on a fixed network, the suggested approach has several drawbacks. In the future, we intend to expand the research on energy efficient routing methods for WSN wireless sensor network to mobile networks. Thank you for watching video. For more projects, please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.